Today I'm going to do a full review on the Casio VL Tone. I picked this up on eBay for about 30 bucks. There seems to be no shortage of them for sale. Now this little guy is primitive even by my standards, which is saying a lot. But this thing has a lot of historical value and you'd probably be surprised to know how often it has been used in popular music. Interestingly enough, it isn't the music sounds that are usually featured, rather the rhythm sounds. It doesn't have drums per se, but it does produce these little beep sounds like this. And that is the signature sound of the VL1. You can hear it being used in songs by popular artists like Fergie, Lady Gaga, Trans X, Trio, and many others. In fact, there's a whole page on Wikipedia showing examples of artists which use the VL1. And I should also mention that dozens of Volkswagen commercials have also used it. Keyless access, adaptive front lights. All right, so let's dig into this thing and find out what it can really do. Now, I will mention that it does have a calculator. Now, originally when this thing was uh, came out in 1980, it was actually marketed primarily as a calculator that happened to have a you know musical instrument built in. But that didn't last very long, and then they started marketing it the other way around, where it happened to be a musical instrument with a built-in calculator. But let's take a quick look at the calculator. You just flip the switch to calculator mode, and you can use it like a standard calculator, although it's kind of slow to type in large numbers because of the key arrangement. Believe it or not, the calculator actually serves an important feature for the musical part of this keyboard, which I'll come back to. It runs on four AA batteries, and it does have a DC power jack in the back, as well as a line output, which I'll be using to record directly from the unit. So let's move it into play mode and see how it sounds. You only get five instruments to pick from. Piano. Fantasy. Violin. Flute. Guitar. So none of them sound particularly realistic, plus it's monophonic. So you can only play one note at a time. But what is this instrument ADSR? Well, that's where you can create your own sounds. And let me show you how this works. There are basically eight attributes you can modify. Waveform, attack, decay, sustain level, sustain time, release time, vibrato, and tremola. Each attribute can be assigned a number from zero to nine. This is very similar to how the synthesizer controls work on a keyboard like this Yamaha where you can move the switches to change the nature of the sound. The switches make it fast and easy though. Okay, so here's how you create a new sound. Uh, so let's say I wanted to create like a synthetic type sound. Um, I could assign these numbers to all the attributes. Okay, so that creates a number of 9009914 to represent that sound. So here's how to get that number into the keyboard. Put it back into calculator mode and type in that number. And then press M plus to store the number in memory. Now move the instrument select over to ADSR and you can play that sound. And while this is an annoying way to have to input the synthesizer data, it's pretty amazing that a keyboard from 1980 would even have such a feature. And none of the subsequent keyboards that came out after this, even from Casio, included that feature unless it was a real high-end synthesizer. Okay, so this guy's got one more incredibly important little trick up its sleeve. It has 29 keys, which is not many, but Notice it has this switch that allows me to move the entire keyboard down an octave. So that adds an entire octave down here. Plus I can move it up an octave, adding these keys here. So that gives the VL1 the equivalent of 51 keys, which is actually more than this Yamaha here. Okay, now the keyboard claims to have a sequencer, and it does, but it's next to useless, especially considering the keyboard is monophonic and it can only store 100 notes. However, I suppose it has its uses, especially when playing the keyboard on stage. You can program your little tune and then play it back using this one key play button. In fact, you'll see Trio actually using this feature when playing live. I should also mention there is a free emulator for this keyboard you can install on a Windows PC. I played with it, but it was a little hard to get it working. I'll put the link to the emulator down in the description field. So to conclude my review, um, I think the VL1 sounds terrible, but it has a very important historical aspect to it, and it is fun to play with. And 
you can pick one up for you know thirty dollars on eBay. So I do recommend going ahead and getting one just uh, just to have because because of its importance uh, in the you know history of music. Um, also, you know you can hook this thing up to a multi a multi track sequencer, which I have done and I've recorded some music on it that way. And especially being that you can change the octave back and forth, it does give you a wide variety of notes to work with and. Uh, in fact, if you listen to the end credits music that I'm going to be using on the end of this video is actually a, a, a multi-track recording of the commando tune, which I have done completely on this keyboard. And of course, if you want to hear the whole song, there's a link to uh, my SoundCloud channel down at the bottom and you can hear the entire song that I created using nothing but this keyboard. Well, I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you next time.